Serializing data in PHP just means we're going to take an object that is live in the program and then we want to turn it into a string. And the reason why you may want to turn it into a string is because you may want to take that string and send it off to another PHP script and then unserialize that string. So what we do is we create an intermediary format. We take an object, a live PHP object, we convert it into a flat string, and then we can take that flat string and we can convert it back into a PHP object. And we can do this very quickly with serialize and unserialize. And in PHP 7, we have a new security measure with the unserialize function. Now it's not recommended to work with serialized data. It is a major problem and can cause quite a few issues with security. However, if you wish to do this, you may. And with PHP 7, we have another layer of security that we can add. So firstly, we have the class new OBJ and it has three properties. One's public, two are private, two contain just simple strings and the third one simply contains an array full of integers. Now that we have this class, we then want to build an object from the class. So I'm going to build the object right here. So what that will do is it will return a new object right here. Then once it's returned the object, it's going to take a look at this function, which is serialize. Now what serialize will do is it will take the object that was produced from the class and turn it into a string. It will turn it into string data. And then once that's finished, that string data will be returned and our variable right here will just contain the string data that explains what this object is. It will explain the properties. It will also explain the access level and so forth. So let's take a look at the data produced from this code right here. So I'll echo out that string data. So let's save it. And you'll notice here that we have one long string in the browser. Now I can see immediately that this is an object and I can see where the object came from. Now it's not bothered about what the object is called. If it was stored inside of a variable, it's not interested in the variable name, but it is interested in where the object came from. So here I can see that this object actually came from the new OBJ class. It came from this class and we have three properties, prop, priv, array. And you can see there we have prop, there's the string hello world, priv, and as it's a private property, it actually prints out the class name and this will tell the PHP compiler that this property is private to this class. So private, private, and you'll notice priv is private to that class and arr is private to that class as well. And priv contains the string and of course, the ARR property contains an array full of integers. So we've got 20 and 200 and so forth. And those are all those integers right there. So there is a string that resembles the object. And then you could take that string and you could post it to another PHP script. And then that PHP script can unserialize that string and turn it into a PHP object again and then start manipulating it like a PHP object. So now it's time to reverse the process and unserialize this data. So I want to take this string and I want to convert it back into a PHP object. So what I want to do is use the unserialize function. Now at the moment, everything you see here is not new in PHP except for a second parameter that we pass in to the unserialize function. So it's worth noting that you can serialize and unserialize in older versions of PHP, but now we have a second parameter that allows us to filter what we can and what we can't unserialize for security reasons. So I'm calling the unserialize function right here, and I'm passing in the data 
as the first parameter, so that string. So that string right there is the first parameter, and that's the serialized data. It's the string representation of our object. Now the second parameter is new in PHP 7, and that allows us to define classes that we can unserialize our data from. So for example, we can say allowed classes, and then we can define another array, and this array can contain a list of allowed classes. So if an object came from a certain class, then you can unserialize that object and you can have it as a regular PHP object. So in our case, we're going to say that any serialized object that came from the new OBJ class, which ours did, our object came from the new OBJ class, we will then allow this object that was serialized to be unserialized. And that's literally how easy it is. So you, the second parameter is an array. You define the allowed classes key. And then you define a subarray. And in there, you define all the classes you will allow to be unserialized. And then we need to echo the results out. So I'm just going to echo out a few line breaks just so we break this up. And then I'm going to concatenate the prop properties value. So you can see here that what it returned, all of this returned a PHP object. And now we can access that PHP object just like you would any other object by using the arrow syntax and then calling up a particular property and pulling out a value. So now we've gone ahead and done that. Let's refresh the browser and you'll notice it pulled out the value of the prop property, which is hello world. Now, if I said you were only allowed to unserialize an object that came from, let's say, the cake class, then we would get an error because this object that was serialized came from the new OBJ class. So if I hit refresh, you'll say that Sorry, the script tried to execute a method or access a property of an incomplete object. So what happens is it doesn't form a properly formatted object. Instead, it's an incomplete PHP project. So it was unserialized to a certain degree, but it wasn't fully unserialized. It's not classed as a proper PHP object. And you can tell that by simply using var export, and then I can pass in the variable that contains this incomplete PHP object now. If I hit refresh, you'll notice that in fact, yes, it did sort of unserialize the data, but you'll see here that it is a PHP incomplete object. It's not actually an object that can be used in PHP under any certain terms. So that allows us to have an extra layer of security and filtering when it comes to unserializing. And likewise, you could specify more classes right here. So I could say, right, now I can allow the objects to be unserialized that came from the cake class or even the new OBJ class as well. So I can save that and now you'll notice it did actually convert it into a PHP object. And all I'll do is I'll pull out the prop properties value. Hit refresh. And there you go. For the unserialized function.